Hi class, welcome to the week two video for the assignment Barriers to Critical Thinking. In week one, we looked at what critical thinking is and we began to define what critical thinking means and how we can go about thinking critically. In week two, we're turning our attention to potential barriers to our thinking. And this means things that might interfere with what, how, or even why we think the things that we do. Barriers can be things like being influenced by what we see in the media to potentially buy certain items. It can be things like stress in our lives that cause us to make bad decisions. And we'll even cover some other barriers within our gamescape and reading of concepts such as enculturation, how we're influenced by the culture around us, our family, and how we were raised. So we're going to be taking a look at all of those things in the context of this assignment. The goal of the assignment is so that the students can understand the objectives from week two, and I've listed these objectives here. The first objective this week is being able to identify barriers to our critical thinking. And again, barriers are those things I was just mentioning. They can be internal things or external things, but anything that's impacting and influencing how you think and preventing you from being able to weigh and question both sides of an issue. The second objective for the week is being able to, to describe ways to overcome barriers or get around those barriers that influence our thinking. We still may be impacted by stress in our life, but how can we use tools to ensure that it doesn't impact our thinking? So those are the objectives this week. The assignment can essentially be broken down into four steps, and I've listed step one for you here. The first step is going to be to identify two barriers to critical thinking. Now this is key. We're looking at barriers to our critical thinking, so not barriers to goals necessarily. Sometimes students want to talk about things that have prevented them from maybe getting a degree in the past. We want to be sure that we reflect not just broadly on barriers in our lives, but specifically barriers to thinking. And again, we want to take barriers that are discussed in chapter two of the textbook. So be sure that you're taking barriers that we've covered in our text or within our gamescape. The next step in this assignment is to write. And you're going to be writing about three different aspects. Um, you're to write 100 words for each barrier. The 100 words is a minimum, not a maximum. So if you go over the 100 words, that is OK. And the 100 words is going to include the next three things that I'm going to cover. So you would have at least a total of 200 words, 100 for each barrier. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to describe the barrier. So for example, in my example, I talked about stress. So you want to describe what stress is and how it impacts your thinking. And remember, this is where we want to include citations to our textbook if we're using specific concepts from the text. In addition, within that 300 words, you're going to be explaining how barriers influence your critical thinking. So you're going to mention what the barrier is, but then also discuss how that's impacted you in your life and give an example. Potentially, it can be general or specific, but really demonstrate that you understand how that barrier has influenced what you think or how you think in the past. And then the final step is to describe how you can overcome these barriers or get around the challenges to your thinking. So if stress is a barrier in your thinking, what are some things that you can do to diminish stress impact on your thinking? Whether it's take a walk when you feel stressed, maybe write in a journal, uh, maybe get some other kind of exercise. What are some things that you can do to overcome? And Think of some additional specifics that you can apply to your own life that will work for you to overcome any barriers that you might have. A note about formatting. This paper should be in APA format, as all your papers are. That means it includes a separate title page, citations from the textbook within the text of the paper, and a reference page. Any questions on APA paper styles or links, there's several things at the Center of Writing Excellence or certainly don't hesitate to ask me. Also, any essay paper should start with a brief introduction that previews 
the main points of the paper and end with a conclusion paragraph. These can be short, they only have to be two to three sentences, but they should include a brief intro and a brief conclusion. And then last, um, include citations. I mentioned this before, but it's really important. Citations are not just when you're directly quoting from the book, but also when you're paraphrasing information. So check at the Center for Writing Excellence, or you can always ask me if you're unsure. And then last, um, you can look at the grading rubric. This is a great tip to, for students because you can look at what points are going to be graded on so you can review it and make sure that you've got everything covered. Proofread your uh, answers, make sure there's proper grammar and spelling. Remember to always capitalize the pronoun I. Then you simply save it as a Microsoft Word document, submit it as an attachment to the assignment link. As always, let me know if you have any questions and good luck.